Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So today I got a kind of quick video, but really cool functional video on how you can copy every file from an S3 bucket to another S3 bucket or to really any other database um, or any location using dynamic task mapping. And the reason we're using dynamic task mapping here is because instead of you know needing to know every file that's contained within the bucket to actually write a statement saying, hey, you know, transfer these files um, to another location. The reason we're using dynamic task mapping is what we're going to do in this DAG is actually read everything. So read all the files that are in a bucket and then using that list that's going to be generated at runtime, copy all of those files into another S3 bucket. And you could swap out that section where we're copying to another S3 bucket, use an S3 to Snowflake operator, S3 to Redshift, S3 to whatever database operator you want to use, or even you could use the Astro SDK and to really go to really any database agnostically. Um, but the key thing here is just focus on the logic of how we're getting all of that information from an S3 bucket and then using that as an argument to then load all those files in parallel uh, to another location. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first thing you're gonna wanna do as we do with all of our DAGs is import some libraries. Um, so the key libraries today are the Airflow datasets library. Um, so we can just define uh, our outputs as a data set. So if we want to use them for downstream triggers, and we can use them there. Um, but also Airflow decorators. Uh, so DAG, just so we're using the Airflow decorator to define our DAG. Classic pendulum date time, because date time on its own sucks. And then we're also going to import S3 list operator and the S3 copy object operator. So those are really just the two only operators you'll need um, for this particular DAG. And once you've got all those imported in, uh, you're ready to start defining some variables before we actually get started with our DAG creation. So with best practices in mind here, we're going to be defining all of our variables at the top of the DAG. So you could either, you know, have these kind of hard coded as we are here, um, where, you know, hey, I can define this my S3 bucket, use this as a variable and all throughout my DAG. And then it just, you know, if I ever need to change this value, I just change it once up here. Um, so that's why, you know, I'm always defining my variables at the start of the DAG rather than just hard coding the values into the actual DAG. Um, so you're just going to you know, say, hey, here's your first S3 bucket, your folder, uh, your bucket eliminator. So these are just standard things. It'll probably be the same for yours as well. Um, your file name, uh, AWS connection ID so that it can actually connect to AWS, um, the S3 bucket that you're going to want to copy to. And then this data set is really just saying if you want to use the arrival of these data sets as a trigger to another downstream DAG. So let's say, you know, hey, after I have... Uh, pull all these uh, S3 files into here, then trigger this DAG to run, or you could have it after this DAG runs, we're saying, hey, after I transfer everything from S3 into another S3 or to Snowflake or wherever, then I wanna trigger some operations that actually consume that data uh, to have data-driven scheduling as that is very hot right now. Um, so now we've got all our variables defined, let's actually start writing our DAG. And so what we're gonna do that is we're going to um, set DAG, DAG ID, start date, um, schedule here. I'm using this data set just to say, hey, you, know, you can use this to say, hey, whenever a file actually arrives in this first bucket, use it to trigger this off. Um, don't need to have that there. You could also just say schedule equals none, um, which I'll just add here. Catch up because false, just add some tags if you have a lot of DAGs in your Airflow UI just to help organize them. Um, and that's pretty it, pretty much it. And we can get started creating our tasks. So here we have our first task. So it's just a two task DAG. So half of the DAG is down here on here, uh, which is the list files. So we're using S3 list operator to, and some Jinja templating, um, to actually list every file within uh, our S3 bucket. So we're just defining a connection ID, uh, my bucket, my first folder, uh, and our delimiter. So these are, again, all just pulling from those values we defined up here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So what this will do is list every file um, in S3 and then return it um, as a list object. So what we're gonna do now is use dynamic task mapping to pass this into the S3 copy object operator uh, to create that transfer operation. So here, now we have the copy file task. And this one's a bit of a doozy, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through it pretty slowly. Um, so the S3 copy object operator, you have this dot partial method here. And so what this is saying is these two variables will be kept the same across all of these dynamically mapped task instances. Um, and then what the expand.kwargs is doing is saying that I want to create X amount of task instances for X amount of list files. So you can see we're referencing the output of this list files as the mapping parameter for our dynamic task mapping. 
And then here we have lambda x. So this is just passing the value that it's going to pull for each location within list files as x into this Jinja template for source bucket key and destination bucket key. So the effect of this is this will take each file name within this list and then input it here after uh, you know your base S3 bucket, you have your S3 bucket delimiter, just that slice. And so this is creating that reference to that S3 uh, dynamically at runtime in parallel. So this will create X number of task instances for X number of files. Um, so uploading them as quickly as possible into your uh, destination location. And then you have your destination bucket key as well, um, where we're again using that um, as the dynamic mapping to say, hey, for every, you know, every one of these source files, create a corresponding uh, destination file or corresponding file in the destination bucket. And so if you were using like, let's say S3 to Snowflake, it would be largely the same setup where you're just saying, hey, for every output from this files, um, create a table within Snowflake. And again, you just say, hey, you know, so you'd have table here um, instead of destination bucket key and still keep source bucket key the same. Um, so a really extensible way to actually leverage this. Um, and then the only thing left is just setting up the uh, bit mapping. So just, you know, say, hey, list files, copy files. Um, and then looks like we deleted a parentheses. So let's add that there. And boom, now we have our DAG ready to go. Um, so you can go take this, it will pull every file that's in an uh, S3 bucket without needing to know what those files are, um, and then copy them into another S3 bucket or to the location of your choosing. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for you today. I just kind of came across this and wanted to make a quick video on it uh, to hopefully help someone else. Um, so I hope I helped you and have a good one. Bye. Data guy out.